Have you ever wondered, in a world of immense ships and endless adventures, what role did Viking women play? They could be great warriors, accompanying men on invasions, or skilled female physicians, holding the secrets of herbs and treating diseases. Raising livestock helps women contribute a lot to the family's income. That probably raised their status in society. They are not just women in simple overalls, but heroines in wars, leaders in family and society. Viking women did not hesitate to take on challenges and could even be powerful lords in their complex society. So where are their stories? What did they keep in their hearts? And how did those secrets create the brilliant images of Viking women we know today? Perhaps to better understand the world behind their appearances, we need to start by asking ourselves the questions. Who were Viking women really? And what was their role in society? How important is it? Fun. If we can see in the sagas, strong independent women and powerful queens from famous countries like Egypt. But the truth is that their stories span dynasties and cultures. Different chemistry. There was Boudicca, queen of the Celtic Iceni tribe, a fearless warrior who stood up to Roman invasion and avenged the atrocities committed against her daughter. Her strength and determination made waves throughout the region with undeniable respect from even her enemies and pirate queens like Qing Shi of 19th century China and Grace O'Malley of 16th century Ireland were talented and daring leaders. Not only were they leaders of pirate armies, but they were also respected enough to attract the attention of other powerful historical figures such as Queen Elizabeth, Rear of England. These legends are the most authentic evidence of feminism in ancient times. Viking women had power, dominance, and a prominent role in society that made men humble. Speaking of Viking women, have you ever wondered about their power and role in the family and community? Their social position is tied to family and camp status. But did you know that Viking women could also go to war? The ancient tombs in the town of Burka have long been an important part of Viking history. Initially, many people thought this was the resting place of an important Viking warrior. But what's special is that, after conducting detailed DNA studies, it turned out that the person resting in Birk was not a male warrior, but a woman. Birka's tomb is just one clear example of how women not only participated but also played an important role in Viking era battles. Their story is not limited to the borders of Birka, but is also evidenced by many graves in Sweden, Norway, and Denmark. These evidences strongly confirm that, like men, Viking women were also brave and determined when they stepped onto the battlefield. In Viking society, women were not subject to the where the parents put the children rule as in some feudal Asian cultures. On the contrary, Viking women had the freedom to choose their husbands, and more specifically, they had the right to file for divorce if they felt unhappy. The Icelandic sagas, traditional Icelandic stories, even record specific rules to protect the rights of Viking women. For example, according to the Icelandic sagas, if a Viking woman faced abuse from her husband three times, or her husband was sexually cold for three years, she had the right to file for divorce without it being considered a violation. Social Ethics This clearly shows that in Viking society, women were not only valued but also had legal rights and protection from unfair situations. In Viking society, not only were men the ones with the right to inherit large lands, but women were also placed in the same situation. Historical evidence proves that Viking women not only inherited property but also became wealthy landowners. They can even become talented traders if they want. Although they were strong warriors, Viking women also required support from men in household chores. Instead of focusing solely on the battlefield, Viking men often participated in tasks such as cooking, baking, and cleaning the house to support the women. Birka is known as Sweden's first town and has such strong historical and cultural importance that the settlement on the island of Birko is included in the UNESCO World Heritage List. Traditional depictions of Viking war leaders are typically masculine, with large men, powerful armor, and long curled beards. However, a discovery at Birka, Sweden, has completely changed the way we view them. In the late 19th century, archaeologists discovered a Viking warrior's tomb, filled with weapons and battle equipment, 
along with two warhorses. The remains were proven to be that of a female warrior and through the buried objects and evidence that she was a high-ranking warrior. Research shows that this Viking woman died in her 30s and was at least 170 centimeters tall. Although women have many equal rights with men, their influence is mainly domestic. They were unlikely to join men in battle. That being said, why is Norse literature and mythology full of legendary women who do this? Of course, when talking about Norse mythology, we cannot mention the Valkyries, known in the sagas as a shield-bearing maiden riding on a white horse with long wings. The Valkyries are supernatural female warriors who also guide worthy souls to Valhalla. Valhalla can be called the Palace of the Dead, one of Odin's castles in Norse mythology. The residents of the warriors who sacrificed heroically on the battlefield and they were brought back to Valhalla by the Valkyries. Or we can talk about Skadi, the daughter of the giant Thiazi who was killed by Thor of Asgard. Since her father had no son to avenge him, Skadi decided to stand up for herself and bring her helmet and all the weapons of war to Asgard to seek revenge. Arriving at the gates of the magical world, she encountered an offer from the Asgardians that she could choose her husband from among them, but only needed to look at their feet to decide. Skadi chose someone she thought would be Balder, the god of handsomeness, but it turned out to be Njord, the god of the sea. Although they differ in their interests, Skadi enjoys snow-capped mountains and hunting, while Njord loves dark caves by water. They tried to live in harmony in their shared home. However, after nine days, Skadi could not stand it and decided to return to his mountain home. Although Skadi may have been the other of the two most important gods, Freyr and Freya, the story does not mention her role in raising them. After breaking up with Njord, she continued to pursue her own interests, including a relationship with the god Odin. Freya, one of the most famous Norse gods, is known as the goddess of fertility, luck, love, desire, the afterlife, and protection. She is especially famous for riding in heaven on a cat cart and everything she has for humanity. As the goddess of fertility, Freya was often prayed to by Vikings for good harvests and wished for health for their children and a successful marriage, believing that her blessing would bring these. Freya's connection to war and battles focuses on her kingdom in the afterlife. Freya presides over the Folkvanger, or Field of the People, where she is said to gather half the warriors from the battlefield. The other half belongs to Odin and Valhalla. Although Folkvanger is rarely mentioned in Norse literature, from what little information there is, it seems that Freya was also involved in seeing the warriors engage in constant battles, or at least, a parts of the Folkvanger may be dedicated to these competitions. Brynhild, also known as Brynhildudr, is a Valkyrie in Norse mythology. After mistakenly assisting a hero in a contest organized by Odin, Brynhild became mortal and was imprisoned in a castle behind a shield wall, sleeping in a burning circle. Luckily, the hero Sigurd came and rescued her, gave her a ring and promised to marry her. However, Brynhild's fate was not a fairy tale love story. Sigurd, in order to reach the court of King Guki, needs to forget Brynhild, given a potion by the sorceress Guki. At the same time, the sorceress also arranged for her son, Gunnar, to rescue Brynhild, but Gunnar could not get through the Ring of Fire. Sigurd, transformed into Gunnar's form, rescues Brynhild and the two marry. However, Brynhild did not know that Sigurd was the one who rescued her. Brynhild and Gunnar's unhappy marriage leads to tragedy, Brynhild, upon learning the truth, became angry and swore revenge. She kills Sigurd's young son and then kills Sigurd himself while he sleeps. Brynhild eventually burned herself, causing herself to die in the flames. In the afterlife in Hell, she meets a giantess who criticizes her, but Brynhildr has no regrets, claiming that she and Sigurd will live their lives together as planned. According to the sagas, they had a daughter in the middle of this series, Aslaug one of Ragnar Lothbrok's wives. So you can see women have equal rights in many social aspects. They can own land, can decide the right to divorce their husbands, etc. However, their scope of influence is only within their tribe. Are you curious how they dress? Maybe people think Viking clothes were just for practical purposes, 
dull and boring. The most important of factor in this cold land is warmth. But in fact, research experts have shown that their clothes are bright and colorful. The color that reflects prestige value as well as monetary value the most is red. It is more expensive because it originates from the root of the matter plant, a plant that is not native to Scandinavia, but must be obtained through trade. So its value is pushed up very high. Some of their clothes even have intricate decorative patterns on them. From things like weapons and boats, we can see how the Vikings like to decorate. Both men's and women's clothes do not have buttons. They also don't have buttons, nor do they have practical additions like pockets. But perhaps beanies and hoods will be more popular with both men and women in the winter. Raising livestock helps women contribute a lot to the family's income. Women were also responsible for their farms, often working around the farm for months at a time while their men were away. Normally, a woman's responsibility is to take care of her home, including the elders, children, and their livestock. But archaeological discoveries, as well as stories depicting Viking women, clearly show that gender equality was common during the Viking Age. Although ancient Scandinavia was dominated by men, it is clear that Viking women were strong, independent, and had substantially more rights than women in other ancient societies. Thank you for listening. What do you think about Viking stories? Please comment below to let me know. Don't forget to click the subscribe button to support me. See you again in the next videos. Sound is in Japan, you're true.